2012, the centenary of the Titanic's completion, departure and demise, sees Belfast embracing its connection to the transatlantic liner, celebrating the city's shipbuilding history and commemorating the great human loss suffered as a result of her sinking. Titanic's story is one of celebration and commemoration for Belfast. The two elements will always be intertwined. Titanic Belfast, the world's largest Titanic visitor attraction, opened in Belfast, Northern Ireland, on 31st of March, on the very site where the ship was designed, built and first kissed the water. The new visitor experience pays homage to Belfast workers who built Titanic and to those who perished on her and has shot to the top of Europe's must-see destinations list. It's absolutely amazing, the splendour of it. Uh, I would suggest everybody get down here as quickly as possible. To see the light shining and the sunshine, the facets, it's just really three-dimensional. It's unbelievable. Don't hesitate, book your flight, come, you have to come to Northern Ireland, Titanic, the largest museum to the Memorial Titanic in the world. When I see it for the first time, this museum, uh, I think to the Guggenheim Museum from Bilbao, it's very modern, it's, uh, it's a good aesthetic, it's very fantastic. The opening of the iconic Titanic Belfast building marks the beginning of a three week long Titanic Belfast festival, celebrating her heritage and commemorating the 1,517 passengers who lost their lives on the ship's fateful maiden voyage. As her physical and spiritual home, Belfast will lead the many commemorations taking place around the world on her centenary. Highlights include a memorial lecture given by Dr. Robert Ballard, the oceanographer who discovered RMS Titanic in 1985. A Titanic centenary commemoration show, it will retell the story of the legendary liner through music and documentary. Performers include the legendary Brian Ferry and Joss Stone. In addition, a specially commissioned requiem by Belfast composer Philip Hammond, entitled Requiem for the Lost Souls of the Titanic, will be performed at St Anne's Cathedral on the anniversary of Titanic's iceberg collision. I wrote the Requiem as a commemoration of the people who died that night 100 years ago. It was, that was the most important thing to me, not the ship, but the people who died that night, over 1,500 people. My relationship to Titanic is really through the shipyards. I was brought up in Belfast, I lived in East Belfast. I could hear the sound of the ship's horns coming from the docks all through my childhood. My father was 10 years old whenever the Titanic went down. So history is that close to me. And for me, it's a symbol of what life is about in general, the transition from life to death. A Titanic Memorial Garden at Belfast City Hall will also be unveiled on the 15th of April, the day she sank. Well, we have a memorial here uh, at Belfast City Hall to the victims that lost their lives on the Titanic uh, for decades. Uh, we now have a refurbished monument which we're uh, unveiling to the city uh, this coming Sunday. It's the only uh, monument uh, and memorial to the people that lost their lives in the Titanic that lists uh, the victims in their entirety. The new memorial garden has been built around an existing Titanic memorial at City Hall that was dedicated to the Belfast men who were lost on board the RMS Titanic and was first unveiled in 1920. The liner's mighty footprint is still very much in evidence throughout the city, meaning nowhere can compare to Belfast for Titanic attractions and experiences. Visitors to the city have a massive array of Titanic bus, cab, bike and walking tours to choose from throughout the ship's centenary year, as well as food, accommodation, theatre, music and historical experiences and a host of other attractions, exhibitions and events worthy of the great liner.